Hi folks, welcome back. In the last chapter, we discuss about the user story format in detail. In this tutorial, I am going to discuss about how to write a good user story. A user story is a good user story if it satisfies invest attribute. Consider these three requirements. As an online buyer, I want to pay the bills online using Visa card so that I can purchase the item. As an online buyer, I want to pay the bills online using MasterCard so that I can purchase the item. As an online buyer, I want to pay the bills online using American Express card so that I can purchase the item. Assume that there are multiple scrum teams working on this project. Will you allocate these stories to different teams? And why not? This is because these stories have a common component which cannot be independently developed. For example, interface of these stories with say shopping cart is common. All these stories require same user details like shipping address, billing address, etc. These stories will also pose estimation problem when done independently. So merging these stories to make a single story makes sense, isn't it? The new story would be, as an online buyer, I want to pay the bills online using the listed credit cards so that I can purchase the items. With a note you can write, customer should be able to pay using Visa, American Express or MasterCard. If you find that a story has a part which is independent of other stories, then try to split and merge. The story should be as independent as possible. Because the dependencies lead to problems in estimation, prioritization, allocation, and scheduling. When a more valuable story depends on a less valuable story, then the team have to spend time on less valuable story. That's another implication. In other words, an independent story means it can be developed in any order. Next attribute is negotiable. This is a little difficult to understand. Let's see. Consider this story being written in the very beginning during the initiation phase at a user story workshop. As an online buyer, I want to pay the grocery items online so that I can save the time. The buyer should be able to pay using Visa, American Express and MasterCard. Do not ask for the type of card separately. Instead, the software should determine it from the first two numbers of the card. The cardholder name and the CVV should be collected along with the expiry date. An OTP should be sent using the registered mobile number and email for verification. So the story contains lot of details. The negotiable attribute criticizes this. Whereas a programmer would welcome a story with each and every detail. Then why it is not encouraged when the story is being created? Okay, tell me what is the difference between a need and a requirement? If I say I want water, is it a need? or a requirement? Let me put it this way. If you are a water service provider, what are you going to deliver to me when I say I want water? One cannot provide appropriate solution without knowing my actual need. The assumptions may be misleading. In a very similar way, most of the times the customers state a requirement and the service providers assume it to be a need. They end up providing the solution for the stated need, which may not be the best solution for the actual need. Now, reaching out to the actual need than the stated requirement is not an easy job. The design thinking approach is developed to gain insight of the unstated need. I won't be getting in more details of the design thinking as of now. Henry Ford, the maker of the first commercial car said, if I ask the people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. The invention of car helped in providing the solution to the customer need much better than the stated requirement. Reaching out to the needs of customer is a win-win for both. The customer gets the need fulfilled, whereas the solution provider may end up in selling more services. For example, the packaged drinking water or a soft drink seller may benefit by selling their product addressing the same need, quenching my thirst. Steve Jobs says, by the time you build the requirement, customer will ask for something new. This happens when the requirement are not in line with the need. 
brand building is another benefit. By fulfilling the needs, one becomes total solution provider than just a service provider. Think about it. Now coming back to the example, the customer is asking for payment by credit card options. It does not mention about mobile wallet payment. What if the mobile wallet payment is not mentioned by the customer because he is not aware that it is also possible in this context. Here the need is to save the time by paying online, right? Rest everything talks about how to implement. Hence, those are negotiable aspects. A good user story captures the essence, not the details. In the beginning, the details should be co-created by product owner and the development team members during the development. This helps to bring in the development team's creativity and experience on the table for the discussion. A story card is not a contract. Instead, story cards are the reminders to have conversation rather than fully detailed requirement themselves. Now, at the time when the story is written, if some important details are known, they should be included as notes to the story card. The note can also have questions to be discussed further. For example, mobile wallet payments to be accepted? Negotiable means the scope for discussion which facilitates the creative thinking. There are other benefits of keeping the story short in the beginning. First, the time required to come up with the product backlog is optimized. Second, in case, in future, if the requirement is dropped, then the effort lost will also be minimum. People resist the change when invested efforts are at stake. Keeping the story details to the minimum essential will thus help in accepting the change as well. So, when to discuss these details then? Note that, the details are to be discussed two to four iterations before the actual development in a meeting called product backlog refinement or product backlog grooming. That's the right time, which is not too early and not too late. Let us see an interestingly negotiated story from non-IT background. A patient telling his requirements to the doctor. In order to gather the acceptance criteria and the need, doctor then asks the magical question, how will you know? The patient explains the expectations. Based on the answer, now the doctor suggests the solution for the need than the initial stated requirements. Interesting. Next attribute is valuable. Consider this requirement statement. The error handling and messages display should be done by a set of library classes so that the messages are consistent. Is there anything wrong with this statement? If yes, then attempt to rephrase and rewrite the story. Alright, the problem with this story is that it is written from developer's perspective instead of the end user. The requirement statement should be restricted to what to do and not how to do. Imagine yourself visiting a bank website and the landing page shows some print stack trace kind of messages. We know that the errors are inevitable. They could be due to the network problem or client machine problem and not necessarily due to the bank software. The problem in this case is that the user feels lost. After seeing the error messages, does not know what to do next. So let's revise the story. As an application user, I should be able to get the error messages in a simple, understandable and inconsistent language so that I know what action to take. For example, instead of print stack trace, the displayed message could be, please delete the cookies from the browser setting and refresh the page. Now this revised story is from end user's perspective, delivering customer convenience as value. A set of library classes is a way to achieve consistency of error messages. However, it should go to the notes section for the later discussion. The developers, when they write a story, they immediately start thinking about the implementation. That is when they unintentionally include the solution to the requirement statement. Some organizations use the word technical stories for developer-centric requirements. Now, rephrase the following non-functional requirement. The connection pooling should be used for all the connections to the database. Let me give you some hint. Performance, scalability and database license cost saving are the values expected. 
again the problem with the stated requirement is that it talks about how to do then what and why the revised story could be up to 100 concurrent users should be able to access the web page with a 10 user database license so that the expected load can be handled without performance degrade and without extra license cost. A note can be added here saying connection pulling may help. For non-functional requirement, the primary beneficiary is customer who is paying to get the software built, who may not be the end user. Non-functional requirements are horizontal requirements, meaning common for multiple stories. Hence, the type of user need not be mentioned while writing such stories. Estimatable or estimable. It is important for development team to come up with approximate size of the story with consensus. Can you guess the primary reasons behind the development team not being able to estimate the efforts required for a story with consensus. Following are the primary reasons. First, developers may lack the domain knowledge. Second, developers may lack the technical knowledge. Third, the story is too big and misses the required details. Can you guess solution for these problems? If the developers do not understand a story, for example, a story from medical domain may not be understandable by engineers. In such cases, some level of domain training will be needed. Or even a discussion with customer who has given the story should help in gaining the general understanding of the story, even if not in full detail. When the dev team lack technical knowledge, a prototype building can help in getting more understanding on the feasibility of design and the technology. Extreme programming has concept of spike for the same. The spike means a time boxed prototype or a proof of concept. For example, the team might decide to experiment for a time box interval of two weeks with the new technology, just enough to be able to estimate the stories. When the story is too big and misses the required detail, the team needs to have more discussion with product owner for the missing details. Even for epics, that is the big stories, team does the tentative estimate for reference. Next attribute, small. Imagine a story running over a period of three sprints. Is that acceptable? The reason is, the story size does matter. It affects the planning. The very purpose of the iteration is to get review comments. If there is nothing to show at the end of every sprint, then there is nothing to demonstrate. So, what's the solution? How to split a story in appropriate size? I am going to discuss the art and science of splitting the story in the next chapter. Thank you for watching. Please leave your feedback comments. You may subscribe the channel for future updates.